Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. It is another Thursday night. <laughs> it's funny how fast they go, you guys. It is the 22nd of June already. Is that not crazy? That means that we're already a th like two thirds of the way through the month and we're almost halfway through the year, you guys. So we had, uh, yesterday was the 21st and I was excited. It was the longest day of the year. Uh, I think the sun came up super early here for us. I, I, like, I feel like I woke up at 4.30 because of how light it was. And then it stayed light till like 9.30 or 9.45, which is awesome for here in this part of the world. <laughs> so I love it when it's oh, these long, bright days for us. So yay, awesome. So you guys, I want to do a shout out and say hi to everybody who is with me right now. And I love to say hi to you guys. So um, it's crazy, you guys. I am going to put this out there. And probably the people that I'm talking to, it doesn't pertain to you at all. But we sometimes, me and other fellow demonstrators, we get people that say to us, why do you say hi to people? And why don't you get right to making cards? And why don't you do this? And I'm like... Why does it matter to you what I do in my class and who my community, I like to say hi to people in my community. And so I, I was talking to my dad about it last weekend because somebody commented like, when are you going to get to making the cards? And my dad watches a lot of farming YouTube videos, right? And he said that people make those kind of comments because they were never taught to say nothing at all unless they have something good to say. <laughs> and so I had this nice conversation with my dad about that and I learned to brush it off, right? And it's all good. And, uh, but I had another one of my demonstrator friends show me something that somebody posted on her page and I was like, wow, does somebody really have the audacity to say that? And it's like, you don't have to watch a demonstrator if you don't want to, like listen to them talk about this or that or say hi to people, but wow, you guys. So I hope you guys, um, I love to say hi to everybody. Like the reason I do these lives, you guys, is I love sharing, but I also love interacting with each of you. Like I love when you say hi and where you're from and that you comment and you like just interact with me. I think if I had to do these lives and you're not there and I'm not communicating with you, then I wouldn't do them. <laughs> so, so when I call out hi to you guys and um, hey that you're here, like I hope that all of you appreciate it. I think you do. I mean, that's why you're joining me right away in the beginning, but I just was like, wow, that people actually think that they can tell a demonstrator who takes it takes a lot to go live in front of people, right? You guys know that. Like, it takes a lot. And to call out somebody and say they shouldn't do something a certain way, like, no. <laughs> like, it doesn't work that way. So I was like, so I haven't done a live with you guys since last week, Thursday. And there's been two comments that have come in, one on one of my videos and one on somebody else's videos. And it's like, sorry, go somewhere else. And that's how we feel about it, right, everybody? That's how I think we feel about it. So on that note, you guys, I'm so excited. Hi, City Run Tree. Hi, Judy Sharp. Hi, Sherry Stewart uh, from Delaware. Hi, Sherry Everett. Sherry, I was replying to you just as I was going up to get my purple notebook. <laughs> if you were like, well, she's texting me. She should be live. <laughs> hi, Angelique. Hi, Linda Hunt. Hi, Betty Pyle and Debbie Gast. Um, hi, Patricia Wright and Cindy Hutchings. Yay, you guys saw that I was had to run upstairs. Hi, Angela Knutson. Hi, Mary Carls from Jericho and Sarah Merchant. Hi, Faye Godby. Hi, Deanna Stell. Deanne, yay, you're here with us. I'm so excited. Hi, Laura Sullivan. Hi, Susan Bellamy. You guys are in for a treat because we've got two classes to share with you right off the bat. Hi, Susan Ray Hendricks. I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, dear. Um, you guys, I try to keep it all straight and all together, but sometimes things get missed and it happens to everybody from now, uh, everybody far, you know, in between. And Susan, I had missed sending her this kit, but I have plenty of them available. Um, so Susan, yours is going to go in the mail for you tomorrow. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Ileana. Hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Donna Grushke. Hi, Linda Kester and Susan Warmly. Yeah, you guys are all here. Hi, Kathy Sanford and Karen Woods. There's Sarah Mitchell. Thanks for sharing, Susan. I appreciate it. Hi, Karen Cotton. 
Hi, Linda Hunt. Yay. There's Barbara Godby. Hi, Sherry Pyre. <laughs> she says, you do you, Christine. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hi, Carol Lannis. Well, the purple hearts, I appreciate them. Uh, hi, Linda Scott. Um, let's see who else is here. Thanks for liking and sharing, everybody. I appreciate it. I thought that you guys liked that I interact with you because apparently, like, I get a lot of you gals that are watching me right off the bat, right? <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, like, I love to chat and visit with you guys, and I like to share, like, what's going on in my world, and like my stories and adventures, hopefully. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Wicklander from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Whoop, whoop. Um, exactly. Visiting beforehand is a great way to get to know each other. And how I look at it is if somebody doesn't want to visit, then they can wait for the replay and they can fast forward. And that's how that goes, right? All right. Um, hi, Cindy Runtree. I think I might have said hi, but I might have missed you. And there's Tammy Steckling. Yay. Hi, Connie Moore. Hi, Sherry Pyre. Um, you have one very smart father, and I love listening to him. You know what? I I do have one very smart father. Um, my dad is amazing, you guys. He's probably, you know, you'll, 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 I, I always feel like my dad is the smartest guy I know, and I've thought that for a very long time. And he actually taught Tyler and I, my mom, <laughs> so we were over by my parents this last weekend, and it was Saturday night. My brother was in town for Father's Day, and we all stayed over at my parents' house on Saturday night. And my brother had to do something for three hours on the computer that he's involved with, like a Dungeons and Dragons thing. And so it was Tyler, myself, my mom, and my dad, and we have never learned how to play sheephead. And my dad has played sheephead for the last 50 years. And they get together with the, the neighbors. Mary Carls is one of them. And uh, one night a month for, I don't know, Mary, how long have you guys been playing sheephead, right? So there's, I think, four couples that have been getting together all these years. And my mom was so excited last month that she, I don't know what it was, but it was like she made $2.80, right? Because they play with nickels and quarters and dimes. And so my parents have been talking about playing sheephead for all of these years, and they've never taught us how to play so Tyler and I were there on Saturday and we're like, you guys, we were like, you need to teach us how to play sheephead because we want to learn. And so we played about six hands of sheephead on Saturday night and not for money or anything, um, just to teach us how to play it. And so my dad is so quick with the adding up and the numbers. It's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> so Donna Grushke, you asked, where is Tigger? Tigger is sleeping in a box in the storage room over 30 feet on the other side of the garage and I left him sleeping there because he looked tired and I wasn't gonna about to pick him up and bring him in here so um I left the door open we'll see if he wakes up and he comes on in here hi Christine Hannon um who else did I miss hi Sharon Land um don't watch live watch the replay and fast forward you got it right exactly like Instead of telling a demonstrator what to do, just figure out a way to make yourself happy and then life is good, right? <laughs> so amen, sister. Oh, yes. Hi, Jennifer Summers. Um, sheep, sheep head. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about um, diamonds. So it's, it, there's, there's rules to it. And I don't know who made up these rules, but they had all this terminology for it. So it was very interesting. Um, exactly. You can't please everybody all the time. And that's just how it goes. So, um, yeah. So Mary Carl said about 40 years, they've been playing with the neighbors, uh, this game and once a month for the last 40 years. Can you imagine that? <laughs> that's a long time. Hi, Ethel King from New Jersey. Um, Sheephead is a hard game to learn. Yes. Okay. So it was really hard to grasp what cards were the best cards to win the hand and get the points and like diamond, like the queen of spades is high and then, or the queen of clubs was high and then spades and then this queen and then that queen and then the diamonds were trump and it was like, and they're all worth points and if you win the hand off a of trump, there was a lot of rules. And so my head was spinning. Hi, Becky Roar. Um, <laughs> hi, Lisa Spacek. So I, I tried my best to to learn and I think we need another round um, when we go back out there for fourth of July weekend we're gonna play some more rounds of sheephead and see if I can't get it like narrowed down but um, it was definitely a different game <laughs> so all right so what we have for you guys tonight is the ink paper scissors bright and beautiful card class 
they're bright and beautiful. Um, it's with the, oh, I left the book over on the, the table over there. I'll have to grab it. It's with the beautiful balloons bundle. Um, it's like the birthday set that's in the, in the annual catalog. And hi, Francis Rodriguez. You finally made it. Yay. Um, we are going to be cutting our paper apart as a group. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. We'll talk about what's in your kits and what you have to do. I have a bunch of these left, you guys. Uh, we cut cardstock for probably they have 12 more sets of this class left. So in case anybody's watching tonight, you're watching tomorrow, you're watching next week or three weeks from now, most likely I will have this kit available that you can reach out to me. Uh, the cost is $30 um, for porch pickup. If you want to come in person tomorrow, Diane also has some kits left. Um, you could do this in person tomorrow at 10 a.m. with Diane. Uh, this is the second month that we paired up and partnered to do. Diane's doing an in-person version of this class and I do the online version. Uh, and she's got seven people signed up for tomorrow, which is awesome. Uh, but she planned for 10 and I planned for some um, amount like 72. And I think I have like 12 left. So, um, so we got lots of cards kitted up in case anybody wants to get this class. It's $37 if you want it mailed to you. Uh, but at this point, if you would like to add it on to a class that we're kidding up next week, we could consolidate and save a little on shipping. So um, just reach out to me. You guys can always email me or you can um, text me, call me. Um, I do notice that when you have an Apple phone, sometimes people send me messages via Apple. And I don't know what this all means in my head. I have a Samsung phone that I work with. Like this is my Samsung phone. And... If you have an Apple phone and you send me a text to my like to my phone number via an Apple message, it hi Mary Lemke, it goes into my tablet and it goes into my uh, phone up here, which I only use for when I do my lives. I don't use this equipment any other time. I am not an Apple person. <laughs> Sorry guys, a Tyler is an Apple fanatic and I am a Samson fanatic so we butt heads a lot about who's better like uh phone is better because I love Samson and he loves Apple but if if people message me via Apple like messaging to this I don't see it so um somebody reached out to me I don't know I have like probably 30 messages and I don't know who they're from because it just shows up with a phone number and I I try to get back to people, but I don't see them and I don't think to go check my messages in here because it's not how I normally get messages. So, um, so Barbara reached out to me and asked me if she could ask me some Stampin' Up! questions and I'm like, okay, yeah, but I texted her from my Samsung phone and so just so you guys know, if you, I know it's like technology is one of the hardest things to grasp, right? And so just know that if you haven't heard back from me and you've texted me, it, uh, you might just pick up the phone and call me or send me an email instead because I don't want to miss ever replying to somebody. But yeah, I don't know how I got on that note, but um, I uh, want to show you guys. The, let's drop down here and I'm going to show you the three. These are the four cards we're going to be making today. Just so you guys know what class we have right now is the ink, paper, scissors. And these are what is in the cover photo for this um, YouTube class as well. So these are what we're going to be making momentarily. But I do want to call out. I have had some happy mail to share with you guys. Um, <laughs> you had Linda Scott and her husband and you, you are, they're the same. Yep. Apple and Samsung, right? The, the never ending battle. I do have four cards here that we are going to give away. Um, we were able to draw some names for those cards. Yay. Hi, Randy Schultz. Um, but I did want to show you what we've been working on. I'm so excited. Chris and I worked on uh, a couple weeks ago. We worked on the layout for the memories and more class. And today I just had the opportunity to put them together. And so in case anybody's wondering, whenever there's new Memories and More products in the either catalog, so I usually do three classes a year for Memories and More, one with each catalog. The one that's in the annual catalog is the Bright and Beautiful, which is actually what we're kind of featuring these the suite of products tonight. So perfect in time to share this with you. There's a Memories and More pack where you get 20 note cards and 20 envelopes, and you get um, you can order the pack of the little cards and it includes stickers. And so we designed the class using only half. Hi, Jeannie Parker. We only used half of the note cards, envelopes, and card pack to make 14 cards. So you're gonna have, hi, Patty Roberts, or Patsy Roberts. <laughs> Finally got to see me live, yay. Um, so you only use half, right? So this is the Memories and More class. It's coming up the first week of July. And I wanna make sure you guys can see these. They're like, they were literally finished an hour ago. I just got the embellishments put on them. So. You're gonna make 14 cards. With it, 
the class, you'll get the note cards and envelopes, the memories and more pack, a pack of the, we call these the egg embellishments because they look like eggs. And then you'll get a pack of, this is the one of the prettiest ribbon sets in the catalog. You guys, it's very shimmery, um, satiny ribbon. And so that comes with this class as well. And you're gonna make, we're gonna make 14 cards and you have enough supplies left over to make 14 more with the addition of a few more card bases and mats. And so just want to roll through these. The Memories and More class is $50, or if you need it mailed to you, it's $60. So, um, and just know uh, before, like when you sign up for the class, just reach out to me to let me know that you want to sign up for it. Because if you're getting game night as well, I'm planning to ship those on the same day and we could consolidate the packages to reduce shipping for you guys. Um, yes, yeah, Susan Ray Hendricks, I absolutely love the ribbon as well. It's one of my favorites, it's so pretty. Um, hi, Hildenel. So if you wanna get in on the memories and more, reach out to me as soon as possible because we're planning to kit these up on Monday and ship on Tuesday and they would ship with, they could ship with the game night, all right? Uh, so this is, so I'm just gonna roll through these really quick so you guys can see and you don't need any stamps, you guys, except for what you, decide to put on the inside, but there's a whole bunch of stickers that you're gonna be able to use to um, stamp, send, um, to put stickers on the inside. So uh, I already lost an embellishment. There was, <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't, like these, sometimes, you gotta press, press embellishments down really hard for them to stick sometimes. So we'll just put that on there. It's probably floating around on the floor somewhere. So um, again, you don't need necessarily to have the stamp set that goes with this bright and beautiful because these note cards or these these cards actually have the words on them. Um, Angelique, yes, we can definitely put you down for this one. Um, and then you guys, don't worry about sending money right away. I want to make sure if you're getting game night, I'll double check that and then I'll tell you what amount to send because it'll be a reduced amount um, because of consolidating shipping. And you guys, uh, here's another one. I just didn't press these down hard enough, I think. So they're probably sitting in the bucket where I brought them down in. So here's another one. So there are four of them that are your regular A2 size, these first four. And then after that, they are gonna be with the, the bigger ones, the big, the note cards that come in the, the, they're like four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then they have the matching envelopes. And there's still the same amount for shipping when you ship a rectangle or card like this. So there's that one. You're the, you're seriously the best. So a great combination of, you could use them for um, upbeat cards, like this is just enjoy today. And then there we've got the inside decorated like that. You've got, you're seriously the best. And congratulations, it could be a graduation card. Cheers to you could be a birthday or a graduation card or a retirement card. Um, you can do this. Good times. Today will be great. Congrats. Hello, lovely. Best wishes. Uh, congrats. You deserve it. So I know we're just in time. Um, all right, Laura. So Laura, you're on the team. So you could also pick up the Be Happy Stamper pricing for this. So you guys, with this class, I offer the team a discounted price as long as they have all their own supplies, the four different things. And then it would be um, a reduced price of $15 or $21 mailed. But again, Laura, if you're getting game night, it would still be reduced shipping. So just if anybody wants to sign up, definitely email me, text me, and we'll go from there. I'll get back to you probably by tomorrow to let you know once I get you signed up. Um, so that one's definitely a happy birthday. And we've got some balloons and we can stamp a sentiment right there. And then this one is a thank you. So great combination of all around different um, occasion cards. You did it. Um, we have lots of graduations that are coming up. Like for part, it's that time of year where the kids are graduating. Um, and so la these don't have to be just birthday cards. They could be graduation, retirement, and they're fun for kids, but yet they're great for adults. So the colors are so upbeat and fun and just so cool that they could go for anybody, any age bracket here. So, so that is the memories and more class, you guys. I'll take this also and I'll send it um, a text tonight. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So you guys, that's the memories and more class hot off the press. I've created the event for it. So you can find it out on my calendar. It's actually, if you're curious, you just go to my events calendar and go to July. So you'll have to click on the events, go to July. It's the fifth 
and the 7th. So 5th in person, 7th online. The online, I think I have it at 3 o'clock because I have um, Tyler's co-workers have dinner plans with us. And so I need to be done by 5. <laughs> so the class is starting at 3 instead of normally 5. Um, all right. Then Diane and I worked on Let's Just Stamp for the month of July featuring color and contour. So we pulled in the delightfully eclectic designer series paper. So that's where this paper comes from. And we tried to go with the bubble bath freesia um, look. And so this one is a little, I'll flip up card like this and we made it into a birthday. But again, you can always stamp whatever sentiment you want. You'll need some sort of focal image for on the front and a sentiment for on the inside and the outside but the designer paper will be cut and everything will be ready for you to assemble. It's just a matter of stamping and then assembly. And then this one features that same stamp and then you'll need a sentiment. And if you don't have color and contour, you guys, anything else would do on here. Um, we also have some little bits of speckles stamped around the back and then you'll get like a little strip of designer paper to go on the inside. And then this one is the garden green mixed with bubble bath. And thank you for everything. So some sort of a flower leaf Coming, there's leaves coming out and then a sentiment and so that is let's just stamp for next month you guys so that's what we got done yay um yes linda hunt um linda hunt's asking about game night you guys and so game night is coming up the first week of july as well uh it's four fun folds this one is like an easel pop-up one with the with the little um, cats on the front doing their little dance moves and then you've got the little guys singing on the inside uh, this is game night or lucky hand. They're both the same. Lucky hands in person, game nights online. And that's our little camping card. I do have, um, I think I'm planning for like 20 more for this one. So there's definitely plenty of space on this, but I would get signed up. I know by the time class happens, I will be out of the kits. So, and this one's a gatefold that opens up like this. Um, this one, you get the, you'll get embellishments, you'll get ribbon, you'll get designer paper, and then you'll get to use the critters from your DSP and you don't have to worry about having any senti um, any stamps except sentiments on this class. So um, perfect, Linda Hunt, and then we'll get you signed up. So yes, this class is also available. Go to my events calendar for July 6th or July 10th for the in-person version. And then one more I might as well show you guys as long as we're showing cards. This is the, also the first week. That thing just cannot stay stuck. I just don't know what is going on with my my dimensional was maybe not as sticky as it should have been. We're going to pickle it right now. We're going to get this guy because I've already fixed this once. So this is the artistically inked order based class. If you're on the team, you can opt to pay for the class. But Diane and I are doing this class um, to finish our quarters very strong. Diane's on my team. So Diane's doing the in-person version and I'm doing the online version. And this is one of those cards that I love this layout. It's so cool. It's got like the little wrap around and it uses some of that um, that new embossing folder called Exposed Brick and all the die cutting. All you need is a sentiment for that one. For this one, all you need is a sentiment. Um, this one, you need a, some sort of flower and foliage and a sentiment. That die cutting is all done for you already. And some will be the reverse this way and some will be going that way. And this one, you need some sort of foliage up here. But that one's coming up the first week of um, July as well. And a lot of you that placed orders recently chose to get this class as your free class. Um, okay, Patsy Roberts, I will make sure to check for a text for you about game night. So yeah, so this one, you guys, is the order-based class. Unless you're on the team, it could be order-based or you could pay for it, whichever you prefer. As long as I got you guys down here, we're going to do the happy mail real quick. So I got lots of cards in here, you guys, recently, and I can't wait to share them. They're so cool. Um, this one comes to us from Susan Rich. If you guys remember, oh, I love how she put the rainbow down here. Um, thought you could use some sunny thoughts today, and it opens like that. Super cool. So this is some of that celebration paper from a year, about a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, like sunshine and rainbows. There was a stamp set that matched it as well. So very pretty, Susan. She sent her scavenger hunt in. Um, thanks for coming in late, Feline, and sharing. Um, the scavenger hunts, you guys, just a reminder, they're due June 30th. So you've got about a week and a day to get them in to me. This one is from Miss Holly Pablo. Look at that, you guys. So she put an inside. This is what Carol Alanis does all the time, too, and I love it. She stamps an inside and puts it on the top, and then it's a ability for me to use the card. If you see here, what she did is she scored lines 
like every inch like that to create this like box look. And then she stamped after that. So it didn't stamp in the grooves, which was super cool. A really different, a different technique. I like that. So very cool. So Holly, it came today. <laughs> Yay. You guys, um, we've had about three people whose mail have gotten lost. Mary Carls, this came today too. I meant to text you. Uh, I had scheduled a text and it didn't go out in time. Like it never sent apparently. So I just wanted to let you know, I did receive your beautiful card here from the, this is from the paper pumpkin like add on. Um, I got your scavenger hunt and I got your check for all the July classes. And I will message that to you too, so that you have that um, in your text messages. Very cool. This one comes to us from Sherry Everett, I believe. Yes, Sherry Everett. And she wrote a little note in there too, so I can reuse. This is from a class that we did with Let's Just Stamp from a couple months ago. It was from Fancy Flora. I think Let's Just Stamp in April, maybe. Uh, very cool. I love that she used the flowers along the side and she's got a little thank you with her little uh, black matte dots on it. And she put a little flower on the inside. Very pretty. I love it. So this one, you guys, comes to us from Melanie Howe. Uh, Melanie's in Tennessee. And you guys, my birthday is in January. But this is how awesome it is to still receive mail <laughs> way up to the fact. I just sent a note out to the entire team. So we have a, on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, we have the Sunshine Committee. And we send out love. Oh, we send out requests for people who need love. Like if you've had a loved one pass away or a pet or if you've had surgery or if something's happened in your life and you could use some inspiration or some love. And um, I just put a note out there because a few people have come back to me and said, I feel bad. I haven't been able to send cards out to anybody on the team. I'm like, don't feel bad. I'm backed up myself on sending cards out to people. Um, I always say that it's better to send a late card than not at all, right? And so this was awesome. I got this card yesterday from Melanie Hao. And you guys, my birthday's in January. And she said, that, <laughs> Melanie, I hope that you're okay. I'm sharing this, but I thought it was amazing because you sent me my birthday card. So this is my birthday card. And January was a, a, a tough month for her, but she still wanted to send me some happy mail, um, even though it's six months after the fact. Um, that she was thinking of me during that time and that um, she really enjoys my classes and the creative escape was back then. So it was really um, a long time. You know, it was back in January and it was a, a crazy, like busy time for all of us, right? Um, so, but I just wanted to show you like, hi, Tracy Groovy. I just wanted to show you, she sent me my birthday card. And so it was awesome that she still thought of me and you guys, late is always better than never. So don't ever think, oh my gosh, I missed somebody's birthday. I shouldn't send them a card because this made my day yesterday getting this card in the mail from Melanie and that her note was that she was still thinking of me and that um, she wanted to send love my way. So I, I was awesome, Melanie. Thank you so much. Um, this one, you guys, look at this card. Oh my goodness. Purplelicious. Okay. So this is from Angelique McClendon. Um, it says, smile. You've got happy mail. You guys, she used the favored flowers uh, paper uh, and a little hello from me to you. I think it's from the pansy patch and she's got, it, it matches perfectly. I just She's got Stella all over everything. She used that hashtag folder. Um, she cut out the flowers here, added some Freesia ribbon. Love the layout from, I'm, Angelique, I'm going to share it. I hope you don't mind. From the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate you. And thank you for all that you do and sharing your love and inspiration with all of us. You are a gem, a true gem, Angelique. Angelique, I had to show this because you used some of that shimmer, um, that was um, in color shimmer paper from last year. You matted that on the DSP. It just, talk about a purplicious card, you guys. <laughs> so perfect bow on the side too. So very awesome. Thank you for this, Angelique. This made my day as well. And then last but certainly not least, you guys, um, actually there's two here. Hang on. So this one's my second last one. This is from Miss Vicki Rodriguez, you guys. Um, this made my day as well. Look at this beautiful card. It looks like a trellis. And when you open it up, you can see that there's um, a mat back here and it's double matted on the inside with some DSP. And it's like she's got these um, uh, arms back and forth and it makes it look like the plant is climbing up the trellis. And I'm like, oh, this might be a good mystery card layout, right? To trick you guys with some little strips of paper and how do we put it together? So my wheels were turning when I saw this, Vicky. So it's really pretty. I love it. And I love that it's purple too. You guys know I'm a sucker for purple cards. <laughs> um, and then last but certainly not least, look at this. It's Cindy Runtree, you guys. And she even has a beehive post-it note that she wrote on here. Uh, she took one of my paper pumpkins from May in a past class, which was awesome. I love 
um, when people take my past classes. <laughs> um, and then we've got a guitar, some cowboy boots, and an old um, vintage car on here. So, or truck, I should say. Yeah, very cool. So Bonnie Lesperance was here last night, and I showed her this right away, Cindy, and Bonnie loved it. This is right up Bonnie's alley with, like, the old-time car and the boots, and so it was very cool that you had this card for me. So thank you so much. So, you guys, I have lots of happy mail. Oh, my goodness, lots of cards here that I'm glad I can always share these cards with you guys. Okay, so let's do roll call, you guys. Um, I'm going to do – I'm going to list off everybody that's taken the class. Um who just signed up for the class, though? Um, I don't know if anybody just signed up for this class. Because if anybody wants to take this class, I want to get you on the list right now so that I include you when I do the door price drawing later. So I know that a bunch of you said that you are interested in game night, but I don't remember this one. Um, your son worked at a hardware store in Nina and they played all the time. Oh, that's awesome, Lisa. <laughs> all right. So yes, Feline, you can definitely sign up for Artistically Inked class. Just send me a note. Um, you can place an order for that anytime. It's uh, the Artistically Inked class is free with a $45 order with the host code. If you're not on the team, if you're on the team, it would be the same thing or you can always pay for it. So yes, absolutely, Feline, you can get in on that. Um, Yes, Sharon Land, we can also get you signed up for it too. Um, make sure to send me an email. That would be awesome. Hi, Mary Jean Kiebert. Um, okay, so if anybody still wants to take the balloons class with me right now, um, Country Living. Okay, so Bonnie was wondering what the name of the stamp set was. And so I said I did not know, um, but I remembered it was a Stampin' Up! one, Country Living. I will have to let her know that. She was interested in knowing what that was. Um, so yes, I'm gonna do roll call. And if anybody is wanting to get signed up, I will make sure I get you on the list here. I'm looking, I have about two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. I do have about 12 left with Diane has three. So I have about nine or 10 and Diane has two or three. So, okay, so we'll run through. If you're here and you wanna shout it out, um, oh, Feline wants to get in on this one. Okay, so Feline, if I have that right, we're going to sign you up. Oh, Feline, confirm if you want ink, paper, scissors for tonight. I know that you are going to do artistically inked is what I'm seeing, but if you want ink, paper, scissors, let me know that as well. I'll do roll call, you guys. So we have Miss Julie Bierschbach, uh, Shirley Malarkey, uh, Carol Donovan, Jenna Helms, Karen Woods, Cheryl Taylor, Mary Lemke, Angela Knutson, Randy Thompson, Laura Sullivan, Sherry Everett, Vicki Rodriguez, Sherry Pyre, and this is a birthday present from Cheryl Taylor to Sherry Pyre. So I love it when people buy classes for each other for birthday presents. That's awesome. So Sherry Pyre, when you are making these cards with Cheryl, I hope you guys enjoy your time together. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, we have Mary Carls, uh, Lori P., Susan Bellamy, Angelique McClendon, uh, Karen Mikowski, Sandy Wicklander, Sarah Merchant, Ruth Nicholson, Barbara Godby, Karen Cotton, Don Ablett, Jennifer Jones, Francis Rodriguez, Fancy Nancy Billets, Jeannie Parker, Pat Thomas, uh, Feline Mays. Oh, Feline, you're already signed up for this class. So we're good. Ha ha. <laughs> so you're not going to sign up again for this class. I know it now. <laughs> uh, so we have Feline Mays on our list already. Um, so Feline, um, you probably had it mailed to you in a past package. So hopefully you have it. Um, Deb Norman, Carla Lake, Leslie McMinn, Linda Scott, Linda Hunt, um, Angie Ward, uh, Annette Rollin, Bonnie Kemen, Patty Wright, uh, Christina Bernards, Deanna Stell, uh, Carmen Melendez, Faye Godby, Hildenel Vilches, Ileana v Viquez, uh, Lynn Beasley, Sherry Stewart, Cindy Hutchings, Kim Cronauer, Karen Stagg, Tracy Gruby, Dee Camelotto, Sarah Mitchell, Tanya Jackson, Donna Gruski, Carolyn Ketchmark, Mary Scott, Deb Ryan, Tammy Steckling, Jody Storman, Shirley Vanderbloomer, and Susan Ray Hendricks, you got added on today, Susan. We figured you out that you needed to be on the list. Um, and Miss Lori Kaiser. So Lori also just signed up today. So we'll add her, which is awesome. Okay, so 
that is quite the list, you guys, which is awesome. And again, I have about, between Diane and me, we, we have about 12 of this class left. And so I'm so excited to see all of you girls here for class. That is awesome. Oh, Sherry said it was such a sweet gift and it goes well for your birthday. Yes, it does. Yay. And I don't know if it was a surprise or not, but hopefully it was a surprise when you opened up the package that you, um, that you had a nice surprise. So, all right, you guys. So we're going to get rocking and rolling. We're going to cut our cardstock. Um, and Feline said her days and nights are running together. I believe it, Feline. You have your hands full and you have a lot going on. So um, I'm happy that I saw your name and we put it together that you're already signed up for class so that we didn't sign you up twice. <laughs> All right. So um, I am going to flip the camera down. You guys, we're going to cut our paper and we're going to make our cards. And you guys, I hope, are going to love them. We have a shaker card and then we have two faker shaker cards. We call them faker shaker cards. And then we have a non-shaker card. So hopefully when you guys see how awesome the cards are, you're like, oh, I should probably um, maybe get this. Um, oh, um, oh, Carol. Yeah, so Carol, your package came today with your swap cards and they're already sorted out. Um, and I did notice that you didn't have the treat in there for Tigger. So send it next time. He will be okay. Um, I do appreciate you thinking of him and um, it'll come the next time. Um, so awesome. Thank you. All right. So you guys in your kit. So this is basically what you get from me for this one. You'll get your 12 sheets of designer paper, all different patterns. You will get one of these, um, little shaker jars. They, these are called iridescent shaker circles. You'll get a pack of the silver and gold cording, and then you'll get your four card kits and mixed in the middle. You guys are two clear envelopes. You will need the two clear envelopes for the two faker shaker cards. And so just so you know, they're in the middle of two of your cards. So um, so this was, we have this lined up for somebody. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to need to pull out your, your the DSP. We're going to get this cut first. So when you guys get an ink, paper, scissors for me, you get, a, you get a quarter pack of DSP, an embellishment, and then the pack of ribbon. And what we're going to do is cut our designer series paper as a group first. And then you can put that back in. And you know what? I think this time, I think last time we cut all the DSP first. And I said, we'll try to alternate. So then this time we're going to cut the DSP for one card, make that card, cut DSP, and then we'll go back and forth. So some people like that and then some people like the other. So to make everybody happy, I'll alternate as much as I remember to alternate. So what we're going to need to do for this is grab out this lime sheet, you guys. You're going to need that one for here. And then you're going to need the one with the stars on it. So let's grab that out of the mix here. So these, so these are the two pieces we need first. And what we're going to do is cut this top piece first and let me just check the measurement it's five and a half by two and three quarter the stars don't really have a pattern to them so I don't think it matters which way you cut it but if it were me I would cut this at the two and three quarter first and I would do that because that leaves the other half if you want to decorate your envelope so we need two and three quarter and then by five and a half so we're gonna go like this to five and a half. And then that's the top piece. And then if you guys wanna decorate your envelope, that is here for you to decorate your envelope. And we might do that. So let's, we'll set that here. If I can grab an envelope to remember, I will decorate my envelope to show you guys. Some of you haven't seen what decorating an envelope is all about. So may, it might be nice to show that. The other DSP, you guys, is five and an eighth by three quarter and you need two of them. So instead of cutting a whole big piece, we're just cutting two strips like that. And the strips are, um, we have the paper going, there is a direction, this is going vertical and then this is horizontal. It really doesn't matter if you want it vertical or horizontal. We did opt to make it go vertical. And since I need three quarters and three quarters, I'm gonna cut this at one and a half I'm gonna cut it at one and a half this way. This is extra at the moment. And then we're gonna cut it at five and an eighth. And you guys, all these measurements are in the tutorial. Anybody who gets an online class with me, you get a tutorial and it's emailed out ahead of time between a day and a week. It just depends on where I'm at in life uh, with writing tutorials. Um, I believe this one got emailed out on Sunday, I'm, I think, I think it was out on Sunday or Monday morning. It was one of the two. So here we have two three quarter inch strips 
and that's what's going to go on there. So now um, what we can do is just set this off to the side for now, and we're going to grab... We're gonna grab this one. So you guys, this is our warm-up card. <laughs> All right, so in your kit, so in the white envelope, you're gonna have a piece of lemon lime twist cardstock, and you're gonna to wanna to burnish it. It's not currently burnished, and then you just know you have two pieces of, um, this is called blueberry bushel. It was a, uh, a new, um, an old color that came back. It was a retired color that came back. You're gonna have one for the outside, and one for the inside. So we like to do double matting. And so with the ink, paper, scissors, we're gonna just set those there. This right here is for in the middle of that. And then this, all this other stuff is for the top of the card for decorating. So before you get glue happy, what I would recommend you do, and this is exactly what I'm doing, is I'm setting this on here and I'm like, hmm, this looks like very little blue border. So I'd actually think, oh, I want a little bit, I want to see a little bit more green. So I think what I'm going to do is just snip off a hair more. And then I'll be able to see, I'm going to bring that down and then I can have a little bit more of a blue border. So uh, before you get glue happy, all you have to do is just test that. If you test it before you put glue on it, then you can put it back on your trimmer and it doesn't cause you any harm with getting glue all over your trimmer. And so get this to be as much of the blue border as you wanna see. And then just know that this guy right here is what's gonna go right in the middle of that. And then all this other stuff is gonna go on the top. Um, we can go ahead and do a little gluing so that we get some pieces put together. Um, there's no reason why we can't glue all of this stuff now. Uh, I, I almost flipped that over, but there is no difference on this. So this is where we're gonna glue that. We'll glue this, glue that one, and this at the same time. Well, I can't do them all at the same time, but we'll do them all in an order basically. Because I had already um, checked the width of the paper, I know I'm good getting these glued down right like this. So with the liquid glue, you guys, you have the ability to maneuver it where you want it while it's still a little wet and it just slides around. Perfect. And then this last one, I'm going to make sure it's flush on the one side, centered top to bottom and flush. And that will help make sure you get it straight. Now, if you look at this, if yours is a little bit longer than the lime, all you have to do is take your scissors and trim it. But that's what we have there. And then you can take, this is already embossed for you with the hashtag, I call it the hashtags embossing folder. It's part of the 3D basics. Um, it is um, on the blueberry bushel and we're gonna just grab some dimensionals and we're gonna pop this one up and get that right onto the front of the card. So then we've got it to that point at least. So just take those off. Now, we always tell people popping is a personal preference, right? If you if you want it popped up, pop it up. Um, if you don't want it popped up, you want it flatter, then go ahead and do that as well. Hi, Suzanne Neild. Um, so we're gonna put this guy right there. Now we've got this to a point where we just gotta do a little bit of stamping. And let's see here, that one is good to me. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of this already. And then we'll get our gluing done on this one. And you guys, this one's actually a, a super, it's a really awesome like detailed card because there's a lot of intricate, die, like there's die cutting, you guys. Um, thank goodness I had, before I left for my trip, I had Anna and Rhonda, um, Karen Wettstein, everybody lined up to help, you know, get stuff done for this class. It was pretty awesome. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of stamping. All right, so on the little tag, so just to show, oh my gosh, you guys, I didn't even show you in the book where this is. Um, this is Beautiful Balloons. So Rose Coleman, who I work with and collaborate with in Canada, she did this as the, this was the Technique Club Class bundle a featured product for May. We pulled it in for ink, paper, scissors for June. And then you're going to get to see it again in July with the Memories and More. So back to back to back to show you how versatile and fun this set is. So the stamps that we're using primarily come out of here 
and that's where the happy birthday is. So we'll pull that out right away. Um, and on the inside, there aren't any star stamps, but what we'll do on this is happy birthday. I think it's time for a celebration. And what we might do is just put a couple balloons. Oh, you know what? Confetti-ish. Let's think about this. We'll do balloons. So we'll grab those out. I'm hopefully gonna see those. And then there's a string. So let's find the string. So we, we did feature this back-to-back -back, um, in three different class series, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's grab this really quick. And what we're gonna do is grab the blueberry bushel ink. <laughs> blueberry bushel, I love blueberry bushel. It's a very pretty blue. And we're gonna do happy birthday. And that's gonna go on our tag. Right in the middle. Now, if you don't want to use this as a birthday card, you could always stamp with whatever else you would like for your sentiment. Um, so there's our blueberry bushel. Now, the other thing, let's see what we're gonna do on the inside here. We're gonna take this balloon and we are going to also grab the sentiment. And I think the sentiment on the inside will also be in blueberry bushel because it's the nice coordinating darker color. I think it's time for a celebration. And it's crooked. Hang on, let's do that one again. Let's try it one more time. Okay, then we're gonna take the lemon lime twist. And I think we're gonna do a balloon and lemon lime twist. I don't know if I grabbed it, no I didn't. So lemon lime twist is <laughs> nowhere to be found so a great runner up i honestly don't know where my lemon lime you guys i'm very proud of myself within the last week i did swap out all my ink pads and i don't see a lemon lime twist so the next closest thing in my book is parakeet party so <laughs> we're gonna go for parakeet party and see once what that looks like because that is one of the in colors and it's a little bit more greeny but i think it's gonna be perfectly fine so we're gonna put a balloon over there and then we're also going to put a little baby balloon right on the other side so we've got two balloons now you got to be careful when you stamp um, if you would go to use this stamp again it might have picked up a little bit of blue from that end so you can see here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is an N right there. So I always tell people when you're stamping a lighter color onto a darker color, don't go back and ink up again right away because you're gonna potentially put that blue ink into your ink pad. So it's always good to clean it off and start over fresh if you're gonna do that. So there's that. Now let's... Let's see what a string will look like. I, I haven't actually played with these balloons yet, you guys. <laughs> so I'm curious what that little string will look like. And we're gonna clean all these guys off and pull the string out and see what, I'm wondering if we make it in blue or if we make it in lime, or maybe we don't have any string at all. I think we're gonna do it in lime. Hi, Jenna Helms. Um, we always say better late than never. And you can always, that's what the great thing is about replays. You guys can always watch the replay. All right, we've got our strings. And so that's what we're gonna do on the inside. All right, so let's, bright and happy colors, you betcha. All right, so we're not done though, you guys. It's hard to see this, but on here, there's little speckles of green. Now you could use the speckles from here, which would be perfectly fine. There's little speckles, there's little confetti pieces. You could stamp that on this tag if you want, or if you want, you could do splattering. We love us our splattering. <laughs> so how you do the splattering is you, I like to put a little bit of ink or a lot of ink. <laughs> yeah, I just sucked that right up. There's a lot of ink on there. Um, hi, Cheryl Taylor. Um, I put a little bit of ink on a block 
Okay, so that's Parakeet Party. It could be Lemon Lime Twist. And then what happens though is I like to add a little bit of water to my block just to help give it a little bit more oomph. Because my Stella pens are usually pretty dried out. So I add a little bit of water to the block and then I dip my Stella pen in to that. That's my palette. I grab my bone folder and you have to be very careful because your splatters will end up going everywhere. And we're gonna zoom in for this so you guys can hopefully see the magic happen. Let's go like this. And so right now you can see it's white. And what you're gonna do, it's going everywhere. Can you guys see it's all over here? It's up there and everywhere but on my tag. And that's why you put a, blah, a piece of paper. So Carissa, when she does this, she has a box and she does it inside of a box so that it stays contained inside the box. All right, so I keep going back. You guys can see that. Oh yes, you can. Okay, good. So we're gonna get more. So this is just splattering with your Stella pen. Um, you could use a bone folder, you could use a scissors. Uh, just know it goes everywhere. Like it's kind of hard to control the Stella pen when you're tapping her like this all over. All right, but you can see that's what could essentially go on your card. Um, I did this technique, in case you're wondering, like on this one card I showed you for memories and more, like that's the splatter. It kind of makes a white area that looks null and void. It gives it a little bit of character. Okay, so that's what we got going on. And we are doing that on a couple cards tonight. So then what you do when you're done with your Stella, you can do that or um, there's green ink in there. So what you could do is color your stars with your Stella pen and that will help clear out the ink color because these are pretty much the same color. And then what happens is then that helps to wear out the color so that when you go to color the next thing, then you don't have any green in it, hopefully. And then you can go to the blue one and add some Stella on that. And we're gonna add some Stella to this one as well. So you guys, I just replenished, I put some rubbing alcohol in there. So mine looks like it's wet like that and then it will dry, but you can kind of see the sparkliness of the Stella like that. Okay, so we have the stamping done. We got our Stella cleaned out and we just have a little bit of final assembly to do here. So we need to pull in for this one, the silver ribbon. And what you're gonna do, I have six, oh, let's undo here. We have about, I don't know, six inches, maybe cut and cut three of these. So one and two, I got a little hot mess going on over here, three. All right, so you've got these three, you line them all up, fold them in half. All right, and this is what's gonna be a little bit difficult, you guys. You wanna take that folded end and that needs to go into the hole. <laughs> so I do advise bringing out your pokey tool and then pushing them down one at a time into there. So you take the folded pieces, the folded ends. So now all three of my folds are on the other side. I open up that loop and I'm going to pull all six of the tails through and hopefully not miss any. You wanna get them right through all three and I have them through some, but not all. All right. That's why you don't wanna short change yourself. If you give yourself too short of ribbon, you're gonna have a hard time with this. And so you have six tails now because you had three pieces, three times two is six. You have your fold <clears throat> at the top and then we're gonna secure this with a glue dot so it doesn't wanna come undone. But that's what we've got for silver ribbon. And then what we're gonna do is glue this and that gets dimensionals. So let's prep this with a few dimensionals so that that's ready to go. And then this one will get liquid glue. And 
And that now goes on to our inside. So whenever we do an ink, paper, scissors, or let's just stamp, you guys, we do like to do the double matting on the inside. It just gives it a pop of color to match. And so a little cool with our balloons on the inside. And then this now kind of goes at a diagonal like that. <clears throat> Let's take this out so it's not so shiny. All right, now our stars. So how would we do our stars? The one star, this pinky one, Berry Burst, is popped up on two sides, so these two points. And then what I would do is put liquid glue on the other part. We're gonna kind of tuck that in on the corner like that. And then this green one, we've got it just hanging out right next to it. I think what we'll do, hi Jennifer Jones, better late than never. <laughs> All right, so that guy's gonna go here. And then our blue one is going to get popped up on the sides. So we're gonna do that over here and that, and then the rest will get some liquid glue on the part that hangs over. And the reason we're doing half dimensional, half liquid glue is because this blueberry piece has already popped up. So we don't want it kind of going crooked. So this is going to hang out over here. And then our pink one, I think this guy will be fine with a little dimensional. And then we'll put that one. Oh, let's, uh, we'll tuck him like that. Something like that. And then the green one also will get a little dimensional. And he'll be hanging out down there. Okay, good. I We already got our stelling done. We got a lot of stella going on. And then the only thing that's left is embellishments. So this is the only card that's not a shaker card. And so we're gonna use these. Now, if you don't wanna glue these on, you guys, and you have other ones, thanks, Catherine Healy. If you have other ones, like rhinestones would be fine, but if you wanna see what we did, oh, hang on, we wanna put a glue dot under here. So I don't want that silver cording to come undone later in life. So what I like to do is I put a glue dot on my finger, I lift this up and put it right underneath there and then push that down and that glue dot will help to secure that ribbon so that it doesn't come undone later. And then what you can do is we'll trim, we'll trim our little tails, just give it a little haircut, and then the gems. So be very careful opening these, you guys. Oh, I would hate for you to spill these anywhere. <laughs> so um, what you're gonna do is put little dots, like, but if for me, I'm gonna put little dots of glue. So just know that you don't need a lot. Oh, and you know what? I think we could stand a little more Stella, right? Over the embossed area of the blueberry bushel. Okay. So then we're gonna put a little dot over here. I'm gonna put one here, one here, one here. So that's five, I'm good with five. Now, here's the tricky part. Finding the ones that you want to put on your card. So they have little circles that look like they're super, I don't know if that was gonna even focus. Maybe not. I don't know if I hold this up here, if it'll focus. It's just a circle. Um, it's got a the middle out of it. But then there's also these that have, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the one I'm gonna put on my card here. There's actually one sticking right there. I'm gonna put that one. So I don't know if you can see that now. I've got two gem, like little, they're not gems. They're, they're the embellishments here. There's one that flew over here. So we could put the circle one on, you're just gonna have to be very careful with the glue because the glue should dry clear, but it'll have a, a hole in the middle of it. So let's grab this one and let's just grab, oh, that didn't, I didn't pick one up. Let's grab, probably got my head in here. <laughs> Makes I can't see what I'm doing, you guys. All right, hang on. Let's see that guy right there. 
like this is the kind of work where I can't quite see it close up. All right, so I just grabbed a few of these little sparkly doodads to put on the front of this card. So I got one here, here, I glued one here, and that looks, that white that you see is actually the liquid glue. It's gonna have to dry. Um, the other thing you could do is find one of those full circles I want that guy right there. You have to be careful too because I noticed that these gems are stacked on top of each other. So, <laughs> Cheryl Taylor, I picture you um, having to be very careful with these gems, FYI. Um, you might have Sherry help you um, open the container. <laughs> um, we're gonna put that guy right in the middle. Okay. All right, so. That one, I would call this one finito. Done, it's finished. All right, I would highly encourage closing up your gems as soon as possible. And we're gonna call this one good for the moment. I'll give you one last looky look at it, but that's what we've got for that one. And we're not quite done. Let's decorate the envelope. So we had this piece of paper that was left. And what I would do is you fold this backwards, fold the flap backwards, I would suggest to put the glue on the flap close to the edge, really thin. And then what happens is you're going to shut the flap onto the piece of paper. Thanks, Betty Pile. Uh, and then now you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut off, let's cut it this way. Just follow the envelope edge as a guide. And then cut this way. And now you've got a matching envelope for your amazing star card. And then that little guy right there. So now you've got the card that has a matching flap for it. So yay! I'm glad you like this card, Kathy, yay. So you could always save this now for something else. And we've got one done. All right, Woo. all right, that one is done. Let's do this one next, our Faker Shaker card. That is featuring the bubble bath and Lost Lagoon. So this one is a fun fold, you guys. So in your kit, you'll have the arm, what I call the arm, like this flaps up and then that comes down. I did not punch these, right? Because this is the designer paper, but I'll show you how to do this or you can choose not to do this. It's completely up to you. But what you have in your kit for this one, let's grab the materials. It's this guy and you're gonna need one of the clear envelopes. Thanks, Vicki. All right, so we're going to need, let's cut our DSP, our designer series paper. So you're gonna need from this one, the polka dotty one, and that pinkish one, and I believe it's that one, or not, hang on. I think that that goes with this one, that goes with this one, so does the stripey one. I think, we're figuring this out real quick. The that confetti one like this, that goes with this card. And then the stripies, that goes with this one. And then now let's see ones here. We need our circles. Okay, there are circles that goes with this one. And I'm pretty sure, I'm thinking that this is this part right here. It's the darker of the pink. I'm pretty sure that's where that comes from. You guys, we made these cards and designed them well over a month ago. And you know, a lot of stuff has happened since then. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. It's that top part of that. So that's what we're going with. Okay, so knowing now we have this one set aside and this one, we got this figured out. All right. So our piece of bubbles here, that is a size of five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So 
So we're going to cut it at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Let's see here. Three and seven eighths is here. All right, sounds good, Vicki. We'll see you later. Hi, Tammy Steckling. You love the star card. Yay. So three and seven eighths. So we're going to cut three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. That's the background piece. I was thinking that this might be big enough for the envelope flap. Okay, it is. We're gonna make it work. I'm gonna show you how to use that. Okay, so we've got the background piece and now the little piece that's here, you guys, that's DSP and that is three and seven eighths by two and a half. Hmm, I wanna see if that's correct. There's got to be more DSP in here. Hang on. Two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Yes, that's the right one. So, two, okay. Two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. All right, so that's this background piece. There's more DSP on the inside, you guys. This card has a lot of DSP on it, actually. So, it's two and seven eighths high. So, I'm going to cut it at two and seven eighths this way. And then it's three and seven eighths this way. All right, so that's the piece that goes on the top here. Then on the inside, there's a piece that looks like this, and there's a piece that looks like that. Those are both the Lost Laguni type pieces, and we'll grab them out. One is this one, and one is that one. Now you could use the same one. If you wanna use the same piece, you can, um, and save the other piece, but, um, Three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths is this one right here. And we used, we didn't use the white part. We used a part here that was like that. So let's cut it at two. So same measurement, two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So that's going to be this inside piece right here. Now, now you have a decision to make. Do you want to make this into a gift card holder so that you can put like a gift card in here or some cash or something? If you do, the three and seven ace is correct, but then I would cut it a little bit shorter. And I think that's where our two and a half measurement is coming from. Yeah. So if you want to, oh, I told you guys we were using this one. You need to save this one. This one goes in a different card. <laughs> It is actually this one right here. So you need to cut this one at three and seven eighths. And then it's about two and a half. You want it to be not as high up into the, the fold here because otherwise it's too hard to pull out what you're trying to get out. So we have it at like two and three quarters. So let's cut this at two and three quarters like this. I'm cutting off the white because I'd rather have more of the green showing. So these two are basically from the same pattern. All right, so I think that all of this is extra. This will be for our envelope, and there's that. Okay, so I think that's it for cutting. Now, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> this was a lot. Okay, it was a lot of DSP. So in your kit, yeah, I know, I need the dark one for the other card. I caught that. Um, in case you guys are wondering, the, so what Sherry was just talking about, um, this card right here is where the dark green goes in. So I, I caught it. I didn't cut it. Yay. <laughs> um, thanks, Feline. All right. So let's look at the inside here. In the year and a half in here, make sure you get all your pieces out. Um, you're going to have the arm piece or the fold piece. Now this is folded the wrong way. We folded it just to get it in your kit. You are going to need to fold this like this so it goes one down and one up right and when you have that folded the right way then just take your bone folder and burnish it that way okay so it's gonna go up and down so that's that you have a little strip in here for a sentiment you have a little balloon of lost lagoon a little berry burst balloon and a gold foil balloon you have your white mat for your inside you'll have a piece of gold polka dotty acetate which is the same size as, now hopefully, the DSP that you cut. 
you'll have your bubble bath and you'll have a lost lagoon piece. Um, you're going to just want to double check, make sure everything mats very nicely. If it doesn't, you can always trim things at this point. Um, so this will go on to here. Let's just double check it that I don't need to trim anything. If you want to see a hair more of the Lost Lagoon, now's your time to trim your DSP a hair shorter. If you like the margin that you're seeing and you can live with it, go get glue happy. But if you want to trim it a little bit to see a little more Lost Lagoon, now you could take and trim off that little bit of a hair if you want to. So let's see what that does to our Lost Lagoon. Thanks, Sarah Mitchell. So there, I see a little bit more Lost Lagoon and I like that a little better. All right, so let's get a little bit glue happy. There's nothing telling us we can't glue this onto the Lost Lagoon mat. So that's our DSP that we cut. And then this is going to go onto our bubble bath mat like this. And then our arm or our foldy part, this piece right here. The law, can I go over the measurements uh, the, the love Lost Lagoon as much as I know. Deanna said Lost Lagoon with Peacock are as great of a combination as Soft Succulent and Evening Evergreen. Um, um, so Sherry, you're, can you go over the measure of the Lost Lagoon again? These guys are, this one right here is three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So the inside one is three and seven eighths and I did it by two and three quarters. So you have a little bit more room here for your um, lip. Okay, so then what we're going to do is take the middle section here. So there's a middle back panel. What you're going to do is put glue on that. And then that goes directly onto the designer series paper mat. Just like this. And so now that opens up and that comes down just like that. Okay. So now... Are you guys ready for the faker shaker? So show hands, how many have done it? <laughs> um, no Sandy Zidu. We were thinking about getting um, honey tonight and we decided not to do it late after I'm done with class. And then we were gonna do it tomorrow night, but my parents um, have a ball game to go to tomorrow night. So we decided we're gonna go to bring her home the weekend of 4th of July. So not this weekend, but next weekend. So we keep hesitating on like when to, when's the best time to bring her because we want to be able to spend as much time with her here um once we bring her um oh you're welcome sherry stewart i'm glad that worked so show of hands have you guys done a faker shaker card before if you haven't um i hope that you thoroughly enjoy this because it makes making shaker cards really fun and easy to do um so what you're going to do is take the two pieces here the acetate and the designer paper you want to make sure there's nothing oh that was glue you want to make sure there's nothing Hmm, okay, for some reason, I had a piece of glue on here. I had a, I don't know, some sort of glue action going on. If that happens, grab your, grab your adhesive remover, and we're gonna get this off of here. Oh, Angelique has never done this, great, okay. So I'm gonna just grab a little bit of my um, adhesive remover, and I'm going to try to just get that off of here, and so that, there was some sort of glue going on. I have no idea if that, Betty hasn't either and Susan hasn't. So perfect. So I got it off of there. Adhesive remover is great to help get any kind of adhesive off of foils and acetate. Oh, Patsy hasn't either. All right. All right. And Catherine can't wait to see it. Cool. Well, you guys get to see two of them tonight because there's two cards in this. So you're going to line these up and what you're going to do is put them into the acetate. Ah, the acetate, the clear envelope, all right? So you're gonna line them up, get them way wedged into the corner like that. All right, and Patty hasn't either, good. All right, make yourself a little room. So the object of this is to fold this edge over, insert your shaker elements, and flip this side over, right? So nothing too crazy. Um, and what you're doing is you're taking advantage of these two sides, you know, that are perfectly awesome for from the envelope. Um, if you see, like I'm noticing here, um, the, 
acetate needs to just get lined up perfectly. I, I, mean, I like things to be like lined up really nice. I noticed that the acetate, one was going wedged into the line more and then it was coming up on the other side. I just kind of even them out a little bit. And what you're gonna do is take either scotch tape or your tearing tape and we're gonna just fold this over like this. And you don't need all of the excess flap hanging there. So you are welcome to, if you want to, um, you can leave this like this and bring it. As long as it's nice and flat, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna use scotch tape, I think. That seems to make sense to me. I'm going to go like this. And I use scotch tape on the sample, I think. We're just gonna fold that over, right? And I'm gonna take my bone folder and kind of give that a nice burnished edge. And the other thing that I sometimes do is if this flap is extending out, like if you don't have it folded down here perfectly straight and it's hanging off the edge, you might just trim it off. <clears throat> okay, now what you need to do is this is all extra right here. All this stuff here is like just, it's too much when you fold this over to have all that back there. You don't need all of that. So what I would do is cut this off right about here and you don't need this, get rid of it. And then you also don't need a lot of this here too. So what I would do is from an angle here, go like this and then cut some of this off of here as well. You don't need all this. And what you're gonna end up doing is folding this over and it'll be shut then, okay? So you wanna try to get that off. Okay, now that you have this set up in the front here, and then this is going to get flapped over. Um, what we're gonna do now is very carefully, if you have a spoon, you can take a spoon, and Tracy has never either, good. So grab a spoon, and you can spoon full these shaker elements in here. Try not to spill them all over the place. You don't need a lot, like to me, I feel like this is a lot, uh, but sometimes, it's nice to have that many shaker elements, right? So get as many in there as you want. You have plenty, you guys. You have a whole jar here. You just need them for two more cards, for sure, <laughs> you know? Um, and then what happens now is you're gonna take this and we're gonna flip this over and we wanna secure this end like this. Now, you might have a little bit of this hanging over the edge. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and cut that at an angle and kind of like miter the edge here, I guess you would call that and so that you don't have that hanging out the back end of the card. And then now if you wanna take tearing tape or scotch tape, whatever you want, and you're going to tape it shut. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Tape it shut, just like this. Okay, so far so good? Like, that's it, you guys, that's a faker shaker card. You'll know why it's a faker shaker card when we get to the real shaker card, <laughs> all right? So what happens now is this is what's gonna get glued right on the top of this. Now, if for those of you that are watching this before you're assembling, I do have a little piece of advice. One thing I didn't do, and I had been doing it on every card so far, um, or on the previous one, is I was measuring things beforehand. Like right now, you don't see a lot of the Lost Lagoon around the edge. Had I measured this before um, putting it together, I probably would have trimmed off a little bit more off of this side and this side to see a little bit more of the Lost Lagoon like that, right? You could have trimmed both of these a hair. Missed the boat on that, and that's okay. Um, it, it You'll still see a little Lost Lagoon, but for those that haven't um, done this and want, you can still trim yours. We're gonna make sure we remember to do that on the next one. So now what I would do with this is use tear and tape and we're gonna use tear and tape along the whole backside. I would not use liquid glue. It's not gonna stick so well to the plastic. And we're gonna run this along the back of that. And we can pick this off. And then we'll get that put right onto the front of the card. And figure out what you want to be the top and the bottom. And that will just go right onto the top of that and then that goes like that okay so we've got a little baby faker shaker going on and the thing is that's really important I um I gotta blow my nose you guys the adhesive remover I 
Make, got me an itchy nose. Hang on. I don't know if I um, touched my nose after touching it, but it all of a sudden gave me an itchy nose. Okay. Okay. Much better. So you have these balloons here, right? And they're already ready for you to put on your card. Um, there's gold is the accent color on this. We need to get our gold cording on. One thing I want to advise is you cannot have your balloon higher than the top of the fold here. I almost did here and I had to trim it because what happens is when you open it up, it gets caught up here. So you cannot attach it higher than what um, the top fold is. So we do need to grab gold cording. So now you're using the gold one, not the silver one. And we've got to prep our um, backs here with some, I'm going to put some glue dots back here. Let's get rid of this stuff here. And we are going to put a little glue dot on the back side of each one of our balloons. Uh, yep, that's good. And this one. And what we've got is a little gold cording coming out. And we're going to cut this. I don't know. I'm going to cut it, make sure I have it long enough. We're going to leave it about four inches and then we'll cut this one long enough. And then this guy here like this. All right. So we've got our balloon started. Um, I don't know if I popped them up. Oh, I did. So just for good measure here, we're going to put another glue dot right over the top of the gold cording so it doesn't risk coming apart. Put that there. And then dimensionals are right down here. We're going to pop these guys up. So there, we'll do those that and that. We'll get these ready and we'll just slap them right on the front and all right so the front of the card. Now again be careful you don't want it to be higher than the top of the fold and we've got the gold one down first and then we'll put this one right next to it and then that one can hang out on that side of it. And we'll bring our tails together in a moment. Um, the designer paper here, this one, that's ready to get glued on. And then this one. If you wanna make this into a gift card holder, um, I am going to, so my Lost Lagoon piece is a little bit small. So I think I'm gonna actually, cause I'm looking at this, there's not a lot of margin. You guys, so before I get glue happy, I'm gonna trim off my hairs, just some hairs. It's always good to do that before you put glue on, like, <laughs> all right, we're gonna do that on this one as well. And we're gonna do a little bit down here. So let's see now. Now, if you're about making this into a gift card holder, I did not punch any of your paper for you because I don't know if you want to. If you don't want to do a gift card holder, you should have um, made it the full size, like a two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths or thereabouts. If you're making it into a gift card, card holder, you could take a circle punch and what you're gonna do is punch a circle like this. Now, do you not have a circle punch? You could very easily take and make a cut right down the middle like this and you could just wedge out a little section too that wouldn't be the worst thing. Make it into a V, right? Because not everybody has a circle punch, right? If you do, you could make the circle punch and make it look just like that. But if you don't, make your own version of it and do something different. Make the little V. And now what you want to do with this is you only want to put adhesive on three sides. Um, I have, fortunately, Paper Pumpkin created in one of their kits. They Well, they didn't create. They included... A very fine eighth inch tear and tape which is perfect for doing a project like this because you only want a little bit of adhesive around those three sides and what we're gonna do now if you don't have the eighth inch tear and tape from Stampin Up or a different brand whatever you can always take a regular tear and tape 
and just cut it down the middle. So the our regular tear and tape is a quarter inch. You could just take your glue scissors and cut it right down the middle. All right, so there's that. And I need just a hair more. And that's going to go right there. And this guy is going to go right centered, left to right, and then closer to the bottom. And now that's set up for you to put a gift card in there or a um, $100 bill, y'all, <laughs> a $50 bill, $20 bill, a $1 bill, a $2 bill, whatever you want, or a check would work as well. So, all right, so that's good to go. And then now I'm happy with that one. So let's get that one glued and put that in. And we're saving our stamping for the very end, you guys. So lots of assembly on this one, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. All right, so there's that. Now we have our inside here yet, and we have our sentiment to do. Uh, so we've got happy birthday. Now where does that come from? Any happy birthday will do, but there isn't really a small enough happy birthday in here. So we grabbed it from Waves of Inspiration, and that little bird does not ever stay put. So we're going to grab Waves of Inspiration, and we're going to stamp that in Lost the Goon. You guys, this is just a half-inch scrap that gets cut from when I cut mats. So it's definitely too long for what you really need it to be. But you're going to take your scissors and trim it however you want it to be. And let's see what we got right here, I think. I'm good with that. Okay. And then we'll set this off to the side. Trim your ends however you want them to be trimmed. And I think I'm going for, I'm going to go one this way and then one that way. So they kind of are got the same angle. All right, and that's gonna go right in the front of our card, which is over here. And here's the trick with your tails. They're going all over the place, right? So grab a glue dot, figure out where you want them to come down and put that glue dot down. Ooh. It might not wanna stick right away because you're putting it on plastic. All right, so now we've got that. So that tail can come into there. That one's gonna come into it. And now you need another glue dot because one is not enough. Grab a second one, put it right next to it, and then kind of loop that last one there. So they're kind of all coming down. I would personally put another glue dot right over the top of that monstrosity of goo. And then this is going to go right over the top of it. We're gonna put a glue dot on each side of the gold and one more over on the way left side and flip that over something like Mary. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that did come up in conversation this weekend. <laughs> all right, so now take all your tails and trim them. They're nice and secure and I don't know, we didn't stell anything, so what you could stella are your balloons. When you go over the top of them, you'll hit the embossed area. Um, we didn't do an inside, hang on. <laughs> um, you could also, if you wanted, you could glue some of these onto the plastic. I highly recommend not doing it because you'll just smear glue everywhere. So I think, unless you wanted to put one, you know what? Ugh. You could put one on your balloons if you really wanted to. If you really, really want to zig a zig ah, you could put a little bit of shakerness on the outside here. Let's try it. I'll be careful picking up all the gems here, but we're gonna put one right there and we're gonna put one right there. So we've got two of them on the outside. So we did add a little bit of bling on the outside. We're not done though, you guys. <laughs> there's an inside. Wait, there's more. All right, so then you've got an inside. Test it out to make sure the size looks good. Looks good to me. And figure out what we want to stamp. So, it is a happy birthday card. I think it's time for a celebration is perfect for that. 
So let's grab that and we are going to use Lost Lagoon again. Mm. Hmm, Berry Burst might be really pretty though. Did I grab it? Yes, I did. Let's do Berry Burst, change it up. So we're gonna do Berry Burst. Put that right in the center, left to right. And then we've got that small little balloon. I think I could picture that being, did I clean it as the question? Yes, so we're gonna put this guy, we're gonna put it hanging out right over here. That's way too dark. Whoa, that's not gonna work. Okay, hang on one moment, please. <laughs> When in doubt, just flip it over and start over. And we will do, it's time, I think it's time for a celebration again. And instead of doing it at full strength, stamp off and do a second strength there. And then with your tail, I think I cleaned it. We're gonna do the same thing with the tail. Stamp off. And we'll do a second strength. And they needed to be a little lighter. They definitely, it covered up too dark, too dark, too dark. So, all right. See things we learn as we go, right? And the reason that I don't know that is because I'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> I, uh, I never stamped the original one. And so for now, I think we'll just put, it's time for a celebration there so that at least we have a sentiment on the inside. Okay, so far so good, you guys got it. We'll put this guy back there. This one needs a little bit of glue happiness. Let's get that. And then we can call our second card done that right in here. The balloons match nicely. They're a little bit lighter. All right, here's our faker shaker. Fun fold card. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, matching envelope, though. We talked about what to do here. So this is not quite wide enough. What? That's okay, though. What we're going to do is we're going to glue the edges here and something like that. Don't go too close to the end because um, it's gonna hang over, it's not gonna cover up all the way to the end. So what you're gonna do is now fold this back. And we're gonna end up cutting, Cindy likes it, yay, good, good, good. Glad you guys like it. So we're gonna end up cutting off Part of this flap. So let's grab this and just to keep it straight. You know what? Here, let's do this first. And then we can take this and line that up on our trimmer. We're going to be cutting off a little bit of the glue, but there's still plenty of glue there. And now you still have a matching envelope because you had just a little bit left of that designer paper. Perfect, all right. Now you guys have the first shaker cake, shaker, baker shaker done. We're gonna move right on to the next one. And hopefully you guys have it down pat now that we can, this can go away and let's grab our next baker shaker. All right, with this one, we need this paper right here and we need this one and this one. So three sheets on this one as well. And let's get our scrap pile. All right, sizing, same thing on this one, you guys. The DSP is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So let's grab this. So we've got three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So we can use this for an envelope again. And five and an eighth. All right, this could go potentially on our inside as well. Now this DSP here is actually three by four. 
So figure out if you want your lines going this way or this way. And we're going to do, um, the figure shaker is so much easier than the real deal. <laughs> it still looks great. Absolutely. I definitely agree too. So three by four. So we're going to do three inches wide here. So this could also be used for your envelope potentially. And then we've got four. So we're going to do three by four. And then the inside piece, we made this into a fun fold as well. So it opens this way and that way. And the inside DSP is also five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. If you want a little bit um, smaller of a white border. So mine too stopped. What stopped? My video stopped working. You guys, I'm watching right along with you. I would be sad if it stopped working, but mine is still working. So maybe go out and come back in and hopefully that'll help. So we've got three and seven A's. And I'm going to cut off the lighter part. I want the darker part on my inside. So five and an eighth. And there's that. All right. So let's do um, an envelope here. Because we're going to do the envelope on all of these cards, you guys. I am feeling it. So we're going to do this one on here. And so let's just do that right away. It's not quite all the way to the end again. So we're going to do just about to right there. Fold that back and then that'll be ready. We're doing it to match. I love this pattern right here is probably definitely my favorite pattern out of this whole pack of DSP, but I think it's in my top five of all of the patterns that are in the annual catalog. I just love this pattern. Okay, so we're going to trim that off and trim that off. And then same concept here. We need to trim <clears throat> just the edge of this flap off a little bit. So let's get that white off of there. So we've got our envelope ready to go. Boom. And let's make this happen. So let's grab the card kit. So what you guys have in this card kit You'd have your little gold foil taily thing string for the balloon, right? You might need to pop out pieces, so there's that. You'll have a misty moonlight embossed balloon with the hash taggy, and then the lost lagoon with the stripes from the splatters and stripes. You have another little scraperoni from a strip of uh, the side of paper. Fresh freesia. Now let's test the fresh freezer right away. That's for our top. Let's make sure our DSP fits in there nicely. It looks good to me. And then you'll have this piece of gold acetate, which is one of the other patterns. So there's three patterns in the gold acetate. So this one right here, just measure it, make sure that it fits nicely to the um, acetate. If anything needs to get trimmed, now's your time to trim it. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. You have two folded pieces here. One is a thick, basic white. And then that is where this DSP goes. Now, you might now, I'm looking at mine, I'm gonna trim a little bit of this DSP a little shorter so I can see a little bit more white. I'm seeing that the white might just be a hair too short. So now is the time to grab out your trimmer and trim off your hairs. And let's do this side just a hair more. And see once if that's better. Good, all right, so make sure you test that out. And then you should have a piece of peacock. Oh, my top five. I love pretty peacock as well, you guys. I'm so happy they brought it back. And then what you need to do on this one is just test to make sure that that looks good. Okay, I'm good. So let's make the magic happen. We're going to glue these two down right away. Get them put together. And then we're going to glue our white. Let's put that over there. Hi, Stacy Burns. All right, then this one goes over here. Like this. How oh, I love Peacock and Fresh Freezer together. Okay, it's a great color combination. And then our white piece. Just make sure when you glue this down that the fold stays to the right. Okay. So then this gonna go into it's the easiest way to make a fun fold you guys just make an extra card on the inside 
and then this piece will go here. Uh, technically, I probably should have done my stamping first, but I'm taking my chances, I guess. So um, if I would have stamped first and it didn't turn out good, I could have flipped it inside out, but I'm gonna go for the glory with it and try to make it good. So there's an extra use of a piece of DSP. So it's like pretty and then pretty. And then what do you do on the inside? If you guys recall, there was this little piece right here that would fit in here perfectly. And I think that's what we're gonna do. So Barbara, did you try what I would do if it was me? I would first stop the app and try to come back in. And if that doesn't work, I would restart my phone, my tablet, or my computer, and then try to come back in. Something's getting hosed up somewhere. All right, <clears throat> so what we've got here is, it's, it's another birthday one, you guys, so definitely went for birthday here. So, and otherwise, Barbara, then what you could always do is catch the replay, which is not always the, you know, the answer you're looking for, but it's always an option. <clears throat> We're going to try to stamp this straight. So let's get our peacock ink here and put that right there. Good. So that's ready. That's ready. Now we get to do the faker shaker again. Um, wait, before I shut this, let's grab out this piece right here. We're going to clean off our Lost Lagoon and go for our pretty peacock on here. You could also do Lost Lagoon on here if you wanted. But let's do pretty peacock. So that's good. I have the stamp set coming. Awesome, Sandy. I'm so happy to hear that you have it coming. And all right, so then we're done with that. And this one will also need a little trimming. You could banner it however you want. I like to do banners like this though. So we're gonna go like that. So that's ready to go. On to the faker shaker part. So you guys will also have your other envelope, your other clear envelope. So you have two clear envelopes in your kit. <clears throat> now that we know the drill, we're gonna cruise through this. You're gonna put this inside your um, clear envelope. And what we're gonna do is fold this over. If for any reason that little edge, you can always take and trim that little corner off if you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're gonna use tear, um, I used just scotch tape to fold this over. Okay, so far so good. Grab, <laughs> you can see here I've got my stamps all over here. Grab this uh, cover off. Hi, Dawn Ablett. And you're home from work and the internet isn't cooperating. Catch the replay. All right, no problem. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy making these cards. Yay. All right. Oh, you got to get in and put your sprinkles on the inside. <clears throat> All right, so you've got as many sprinkles in there as you want. Now we're going to shut it up. And the thing is, we're going to kind of wedge out. Oh, cut this off here first. We don't need all that extra flap. And then I'm going to cut this at an angle. Get that. Get it off of here. Throw that away. The one thing I didn't do is I didn't take my bone folder and kind of burnish that edge. You can definitely do that. And now this side, we're going to miter the corners like that like that and flip that end over and then tape it secure and that's our faker shaker you guys at its finest and then tear and tape grab that tear and tape and we're going to secure every uh, side with some tear and tape uh, i cut that one it was a little too long so we'll go like that like that, and one through the middle for good measure. All right, that was easy. You guys, this is probably by far gonna be the easiest card for you. Now that you saw the first shaker, faker shaker, this one's gonna go licky split. Okay, so make sure your card's the right way here, and you're going to put this down right in the middle. I love that you can see all those diagonal patterns coming all the way around like that. That's it, you could pop it up with dimensionals if you wanted to. But there's your faker shaker. All right, balloon action. Now, 
what you're gonna do is the same thing that we did on the last one. You're gonna flip over and put a little glue dot on the base of each of your balloons. Now, we did the blue one here slightly different. We took, so this is gold again. We took, and so this one's the same. That guy didn't change. He's gonna be coming out the bottom, just cut what you need. This one is slightly different though. We took the end and then we wrapped it around the front, brought it back up, and then brought it down. Promise you, that's what we did. So you're gonna need help. You're gonna need a little extra security blanket for this guy, because that, otherwise that's gonna go all over wonky on you. All right, cut it long enough. And then it's like it's wrapped around it here. Right, so it's kind of wrapped around it and then it's coming out that left-hand side and you've got it secure here with some glue dots. So I'm going to secure this one with another glue dot and a one more for good measure on that guy. All right, so then you're gonna pop these up with dimensionals. I would anyways. And then Stick these on the front of the card. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the gold stringy thing. So the blue one's gonna come down like that. And then our Lost Lagoon one is kind of overlapping slightly. All right, and then this little doohiggy, I would take a glue dot right to the part where it's at the top here. And I would take one more and put it right on that part here and then that's going to kind of lift up here and sneak it in okay and then we have to secure our gold cording down here kind of where you want them to meet put a little glue dot there and have them come into it like that and then I'm going to put another glue dot you guys a lot of glue dots <laughs> right over the top of it all right so they're secure and then we're gonna put our dimensionals. I'm gonna put it to the to the right, to the left, and then way to the left on this one. And then that kind of gets set right over the top where our strings are meeting. Trim your little tailsies. Stella your balloons. Just like so. I'm going to squeeze this and hopefully it doesn't run all over. It's all full of rubbing alcohol. All right, so there's that. All right, from this one then, I did add some gems on these balloons as well. So we're gonna put one there, one there, and one over there. So I've got that prepped. Be very careful opening up your shaker dudes again. I'm gonna grab the putty end here. See if, what I can find, there's one. So there's a little shiny one. We're gonna put one here and one right. Come on, little dude. There. So three of them is what I went for on this one. If you want to add more, you can. I wouldn't add them to the, again, to the clear window sheet. I would definitely add them to the, like the cardstock. Um, my favorite card. I think this is it. My favorite one. I love it. And then that opens this way. And then it's time for a celebration. I love it. I love this striped pattern paper. So cool. All right. And on top of it, a matching envelope. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. All right. That one went lickety split, you guys. So, three cards done, one more to go. The last card looks like this. Okay, so this is our real shaker card. So no faker shaker for this one, real, real time here. All right, so what do we mean by real? <laughs> well, we're actually pulling in a window sheet and we're making it with foam strips and we're going, we're going big. Um, on the inside, you guys, we have here, nothing <laughs> stamp so i'm gonna stamp my inside at the same time but we have a double matting so all right so in your card kit 
you've got all these. So you have a window sheet, you have a white balloon. This is already die cut and embossed for you guys, so that's ready to go. Our window sheet's gonna fit behind there. You have your two berry bursts, white and azure. So that's already in your kit. What we need to do is cut our DSP. And what we need for that is, let's put this guy right there. You need these two patterns here. And same concept, we are not cutting a big striped piece, we're just cutting two strips for the top and bottom. And then we're gonna cut a piece big enough for behind here. All right, so then the strips are three and seven eighths by one inch, and we need two of them. So let's grab this, and we need three and seven eighths by like an inch and an inch. So what I'm gonna do is cut off two inches this way. And I went for the darker pattern here, you guys, versus the lighter pattern. And then it was by three and seven eighths. And again, I'm cutting off the lighter pattern, keeping the darker pattern. And then I'm just gonna test this really quick just to make sure that fits on there nice. I'm good with that margin. So now I'm gonna cut this in half at one inch. And one of these is the top and one's the bottom. All right, this could definitely get used for my envelope or the confetti one could when we get that far because we'll definitely do the envelope. Now the confetti piece. When you look at this piece, you gotta take in that there's blue and pink mixed. And we cut this in a way that the blue was over here and the pink was, so we wanted blue and pink. And the size that we need is three and three quarter by three and three eighths. So it's three and three quarter wide by three and three eighths high. So we're gonna go three and three quarter and I'm gonna have blue here, pink here. So we get blue and pink on it. So three and three quarter. Thanks, Randy. Hi, welcome back, Barbara. Three and three quarter. So this could definitely work on our envelope too by three and three eighths. So do you like the little darker pink? Like if you look at this, this is lighter, this is darker. I'm gonna go for this section right here. So I'm gonna flip it this way and do three and three eighths. And then this is what's going behind here. So we've got that ready. Um, I think because this is almost the exact size that we need, we're gonna use that as what we use for our envelope. You guys getting this? You loving all these decorating of the envelopes? You don't see me do that very often. <laughs> so it's fun. It takes a little extra time. I will say that to do this in a class, it takes a little bit extra when you do it four times. But the main thing is you have to put this on so that it's backwards, right? So that you're putting the side you don't want into the glue. So it takes a little bit longer, but it's fun to see that, the whole gluing of the envelope flap. And then we're gonna just take our scissors, trim that, and I'll be honest, this is so close that I just might even leave it. There's just a little bit of overhang there. So we've got our envelope flap ready to go, and we're going to Oh, let's work on assembly. We'll save the stamping for the end. All right, so we'll set those off to the side. You've got here your azure afternoon, a very pretty bright blue color. And what you're gonna do is just burnish. Keep it vertical. All right, so then we have here, we have our strips. Oh, this is our inside piece, so let's set that there. We need these guys, these guys. Okay, flip them over and we're gonna glue this down. Okay, you guys, this is what we would call a real shaker card, just FYI. Real, because we're actually using a window sheet. To me, it's real, and then we're using foam strips. Um, you can use um, dimensionals, but it's a pain in the butt. The foam strips, um, what I mean by foam strips are these things right here. We're gonna be Stampin' Up sells these. They're called foam adhesive sheets. So we're gonna be using some of these up. Let's get that out of here so we have them ready. You get two full sheets of them. All right, so that's ready to go. Then what needs to happen is you have this piece right here. We need to get our window sheet adhered onto here. We need to, well, actually first, there is, if you notice, our 
recording is coming up from underneath that. So we need to get that done first. So let's prep the back of that with some tear and tape. And so we went with two silver and two gold. Silver and gold. All right, so we're gonna grab the silver cording. And what we need to do is bring it from the back here and just cut it long enough so that you're not gonna be struggling later. So cut that long enough and then do the same thing with that one. So this cording needs to come up and over. Okay, so we've got that set. Then what we're gonna do is get our window sheet in, oh, it detached. So we're gonna make sure we get tear and tape over that right away. You don't want that coming undone later in life. So let's get that nicely secured. Get this nicely secured. And we're gonna get, so we're, what we're doing next is gluing or adhering our window sheet down. Because if you don't put the window sheet down, all your shaker parts are gonna come out, you guys. So um, definitely don't want that to happen. So we're going to just make sure this gets put down. Um, I think what we're going to do is use some of that really skinny Verizon had an outage locally. All right. So Sherry said that's probably what happened. Why people aren't able to, sometimes people are having issues on the East coast watching. So I'm going to use this skinny tear and tape down the side here. Again, you could cut your quarter inch tear and tape, um, in half as well, or use glue dots. Okay. So what we're gonna do is peel all this off and make a big mess of the backing here. And let's get this ready. And we're gonna put the window sheet down. Window sheet goes first and that's gonna create the, what we need to like keep our, um, our little shaker sequence in. So here's our window sheet and it's slightly smaller than the azure piece and it should fit right over that. You should have a little wiggle room and it should go end to end here. Like it should cover the, the open cut area here, right? So press that down so it sticks good. Hi Becky Schlossnagel. And then, so we still got our strings for it hanging out here for the future. All right, then the next step is we need to get these foam strips down. Ultimately, we need to block off the entire area so that these shaker things don't come hanging out all over the place. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run this. This is the right length for the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to kinda just partition off the side here first. and to create structure around the edges is what I'm doing, okay? Ultimately, I am going to make sure that there are no gaps and you don't wanna see the foam strips through either. So we're gonna make sure that's far enough over and we're going to get that up here. Now, I'm not making sure that things are completely connected on the edges because I'm gonna, I don't want my shakers going everywhere. So now that I have my outline. Now I'm going to focus on making sure that my balloons are kind of partitioned off. So this is almost all the way to the edge. So I'm going to bring this one over to here and you can bend these. Like you can see what I just did there. I bent it and I'm going to build a little barrier like that. And this one's going to come down across like this. And I'm going to build a little corner one here so that they don't get all stuck up in the corner, right? So they're gonna end at the bottom here and now I'm gonna kind of partition this off so that they don't go all the way up to the top. I'm just gonna go like that. I do want to put a little bit in the middle here just for support. You know, we need a good underwire here. Uh, that's probably a little too long. So let's do, I'm not really caring that it's completely partitioned off. I just wanna have support there. I want a little support there. And I do wanna partition this off though. So we're gonna get that 
all the way up to here and cut it and then I kind of just wedge it in place. And do I wanna care about this corner? Yeah, I might as well. So I'm gonna just kind of partition that off. So now my shakers are gonna stay within here and here. They can migrate back and forth because there's a little room there. Got a little dimensional left, but basically you're building the background, all right? So now what? <laughs> kind of get any dust out of the way. Our goal now is to get our shakers in here and then um, we're gonna put this piece of paper over the top of it. Now this paper should be slightly smaller than it, um, like the azure piece, so that you don't have to worry about it going over the edge, right? So if you look at this, it is slightly smaller, so it should be good to put it on there. Figure out if you want your pink in the bottom or the top, and mine's perfect. So I'm gonna set this on here like that. So what I do is I personally take off um, the backing and then I put my sprinkles in and then I put my paper down. Okay, and again, you need to make sure you have your window sheet and that you have that down first and then you put the strips of dimensional backing. If you don't have these foam strips, it's really hard to do this with the regular mini or large dimensionals. And you just wanna make sure that this is all connected so that you don't have a spot for your little dudes to escape out. Right? And I'm not worried about like here and here because I've got mine contained in that area. All right, now it comes time to lay down our sprinkles. Grab that spoon again and get these guys in here. Many or as few as you really want. There, good with that. And now is to put our sheet on. You don't want to start and pull it up because everything will shake all over the place. You really need to trust in having it straight and setting it down right. I eyeball from the top here. I wanna make sure my bottom, my left, and my right are good. And then I'm assuming my top is good. And now you want to press down everywhere so that that paper bonds to the adhesive sheet. You don't wanna have any open area. It's okay if the adhesive sheet is sticking out the end here, as long as when you flip it over, it's not coming out the side here. If it is like that, it's just kind of bulging a little bit, just push it back in, okay? But your goal is to have them just sprinkle around in there. Shake, 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 Sonora. Shake that body liner. All right, um, then, <laughs> so far so good. This is going to get put right on there like that. So we can just test that. Looks good. I'm gonna just snip off a little guy right there. All right, so we need some glue action. So we're gonna glue and glue. And, oh, stuck to me. And then this one goes right on here. And this one goes right now. You want to center it top to bottom if you can, or you could do it north too. Um, I have it just so you can barely see. So it's a little bit less up here and more down here, but you can't go past where the DSP, because the DSP is only an inch on the bottom. So you've got it something like that, because then it gives you more room for your bow here. All right, so, so far so good. We have plenty of this, so we're gonna grab a glue dot and we're gonna prep that. Our tail's gonna come right down into here. So that sticks into the glue here. We're gonna pull that one there. Good. All right, so we've got a good starting point. Now what we need to do is get our last balloon done and then stamp something on the inside. So we're getting there. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is the happy birthday that comes in the set. So I think we're done with the waves of inspiration. So we'll put that back there. 
and we've got berry burst for our balloon. And we're gonna stamp that on the balloon. And that again is berry burst. So ink that up good. So we've got happy birthday. And then we're gonna do the, this calls for a celebration on the inside. And that was last in Peacock. It is harder than a faker shaker, Patsy. I definitely agree. It um, that's why the that's why they're called faker shakers because they like they give you the illusion of an awesome shaker card, but they are so much easier to make. So I completely agree that they take a lot more time. They are a lot more tedious. Absolutely, a lot more tedious. So we need to pull. Whoa, we need to pull out the azure afternoon for this and you know what I didn't do I always say I'm gonna do it and then I never remember to do it because <laughs> I'm like I was complete slackering on the inside of this one and as long as we're here and we have the ink open we're gonna not be a slacker and get that stamped all right now we can say we're good on berry burst that can sit out right there. Our balloons. There were, let's put some balloons on the inside. So let's, we're done with the happy birthday. And there are, on the shaker here, this guy. We're going to do the azure. And I know that this is going to be completely too dark as well for our balloon. So we're going to do a second strength one right in the middle. And we'll do that same thing right here. Perfect. And then we have the string. And that's dirty. So we're going to clean that. Don't forget to do your second strength. And that will come right down. <laughs> it's a twofer here. All right. Good. All right. So that's what we've got for the inside. We're not done, though, because on our balloony here there's splattering going on, all right? So the, the balloon itself looks fine, but it's white, right? So we definitely took advantage of the splattering technique on this. So we're done with the green. So we're gonna wipe that green off. We're gonna go to the blue and grab that Stella pen back. We need a little water. Oh, thanks, Brandon. <laughs> so we're going to put a little water in there to help get that a little bit more liquidy. And grab that Stella pen, grab the bone folder, move your card out of the way, and we're going to splatter our balloon. I want you guys to see this up close, too. I just love the splattering. The more water you get into the tip of the brush, the bigger your splotches are gonna be. And if you don't want them that big, put a little less ink out there. There, all right. <clears throat> so I've got a lot of zoo going on. I could take that and just gently brush against the azure to help add a little bit of color and put some Stella over the top of that raised image. Oh, Ileana, your video stopped. So that's been happening to people. I know that my video has not stopped. I'm still watching along with you guys. So uh, definitely go back in, come back out, or go out, come back in. All right, so we've got our Stella ink done for now. And we've got our balloon ready to go. Now we gotta do the same thing with this. We are going to put a little blue dot right on the back side of this balloon. Take your, now we've got silver again. Take the end of the silver. And you're going to wrap it around twice. So one, two, catch up here. And we're going to put another glue dot to help secure 
our transaction back here. Yeah, after you make a few of them, if you've never done a real shaker card, it does, you guys, I hadn't made one for a couple years, and uh, I forgot to put the window sheet down before I put all of the the foam strip down, and I had to rip all the foam, foam strips off, um, and it was so sad. I had to rip all the foam strips off and redo it all because I forgot, <laughs> so that happens. All right, so now what we've got is I think I just did that flat. So we're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue behind the balloony. And then this hangs out right up about here. And then this one comes right, I left a little gap there for that one to fade right in the middle. We're gonna put a glue dot right over the top of it. And then we're gonna make a bow, you guys. So bow makers. Grab out your bow maker, figure out how big you want your bow, and I'm going to do a triple bow because we have three lines coming down. I'm going to go one, two, and three times around, and we're going to do up and over, and I'm going to go up and over. So I've got two lines in the middle, and now what you do is you have to knot it very tight in the back here. The silver cording is not the easiest thing to use for bows because it, it's, I guess the word I use is slippery. It does not like to stay tight. So you're gonna have to be very diligent about your adhesive on it because if you don't put it in the right spots, your bow is gonna want to come undone and unravel itself like this stuff does all the time. So. What you're gonna wanna do when you're done using your cording, I definitely take a piece of tape, take your little tab and put it right over the top of it. And that will help hold it down and then put it back in the bag. Otherwise it's gonna find itself unraveling on you a lot. So what I mean by securing it, the transaction here, you grab another glue dot. I know you already put one down, but I would definitely put another one. Get it nice and goopy and take that back of the bow and stick that right into it. And as you're pressing down, pull your tails down and push that bow right into that glue dot and hope and pray that it just stays put forever. And you've got lots of tails going on, so you do need to trim these, otherwise they're gonna hang all over the place on you. So you got your tails trimmed Okay, so, so far so good. Yep, this one took a little bit. Ah! Oh, company's coming. All right, I definitely had that land the wrong way. Get the ink off the floor. All right, so we need to bedazzle it a little bit. So we're gonna do one, two, and over there looks good. Kind of the final countdown here, you guys. I know it's a little bit longer than normal, but we did, for ink, paper, scissors, that d does tend to happen because we do cut the DSP as a group versus having it done for you already. All right, so there's one embellishment. There's two and three. That one didn't look like it worked so good, so we're gonna grab another one. All right, I think we've officially finished the cards. So, <laughs> we made quite the mess over here, you guys. All right, let's... All right, let's get them out here. Clean up on aisle nine is definitely needed over here. Um, we're gonna bring them up. Oh, did I stamp? Yes, I did, I stamped the inside. Okay, good. So, but I need to stamp. I need to glue. I'm not quite done. Here I thought I was, but one moment, please. We have to glue our inside in. So let's get that ready and get this ready. And thank you, Sherry Everett. Thanks, Patsy. I'm glad you guys like them. So that one's gonna go down first. So let's put that here. Just a reminder, if you guys, if anybody's new to watching me and you don't get emails from me, I highly recommend, and if you want them, right? <laughs> I hate to spam you, but if you want emails from me and to know what's coming up for upcoming classes, you should go to my website, cardsbychrisb.com, 
and you go to um, probably my events schedule page and underneath the picture of where the host code is, there's a way to subscribe to get my emails. And that's where you would go to sign up um, to get my emails. Then you'll hear about classes and sales and free shipping and all that good stuff. So definitely something worthwhile. Here you go. So this is our real shaker card. And then it opens up and there's a sprinkle on the inside. All right. So yay, you guys, we made it through um, all four of our amazing, bright and beautiful cards. Um, thanks, Dot Gardener. I'm glad you're watching the replay. Thanks, Susan Ray Hendricks. All right, we're going to put that guy away here. Yeah, Laura said it's the messiest you've seen my desk. Definitely. I would have to agree. This is a little bit of a lot going on right now, you guys. Wow. All right, so I'm going to do a little cleanup while you guys chime in and tell me what your favorite card is. Um, I'm going to try to get things cleaned up a little bit so it's not all here for me after we end. And you guys can tell me what your favorite is. I'm going to bring them all in here just in a moment. Let's get this put over here. Let's get these guys cleaned up. It's very important, you know, get those stamps cleaned. I don't even know where that, oh, that must have been from our gems. Okay. Oh, these little guys too. So let's get this cleaned. I'm going to get these scraps and we're going to bring all the cards in and show you what we did tonight. It was a very productive night, I might say. All right, let's get this over here. Bring these over here. Look at this mess we have going on, you guys. All right. When I do that, I try to not get any of them on the floor, but it's natural. They just want to fly on the floor. All right. So we had our real shaker card with this matching envelope. We had our faker shaker with that matching envelope. We had another faker shaker with that one. And then we had our non-shaker card with that envelope with the stars. So I think I told you guys already, I think that's my favorite. I just love that color combination. And I believe that that was our third card um, that we made. And so um, that's what Laura says, that she likes it the best as well. All right, very good. I think that I cleaned this. Yep. All right, Dot said I actually got the last part. Oh, you actually got the last part. Got it, cool. Um, Sherry likes the last one. Good, good, good. All right, here's our string that needs to come back in here. And let's get, I noticed that I have my acetate sheet in here. All right, so we got the stamps all put away while you guys are talking to me. And let's... We are going to do the little door prize. So everybody um, who did the online class, and I also have in-person mixed into the list here. Um, Betty likes the non-shaker one the best. Awesome. And Kimberly agrees she likes this one the best. All right, cool, cool. So we have the By the Bay class here, you guys. Just so you know, this is the car. So I did this class back in March, and I have like seven or eight of this class left. In case anybody missed it, this was the sweet bundle class. Um, Ruth said the favorite is the striped as well. Cool. Um, this was the sweet bundle class from a few months ago. I do have plenty of kits. It would be free with an order or um, you could pay for it. Uh, you could always go back and watch the video. When you sign up for class, you get the tutorial as well. And what we're going to do is announce who the winners of the cards we made in class that night are. So I've got that on the backs here. And what we're going to do now, though is we'll pull up here. Oh, you guys are liking the third card with me too. Thanks for sharing on Facebook, Linda. I appreciate it. Just a reminder too, if you guys like here, if there's a little thumbs up, you could always go in and um, like the video so that that gets it shared more. So we're gonna go to random number generator and we are going to put in the number of people who signed up for this class, you guys. So let's see here. We have June was 70 people. So we're going to put in the number 70 and click the word generate. And we're going to see who our door prize winner is first. Holy Moses. It went straight to number 70, you guys. Number 70 is Miss Lori Kaiser. So you are the lucky duck winner, Lori, of a door prize. Yay. Very cool. Um, she was the last one that I put on the list this afternoon. All right. So we got Lori. That's great. So um, 
I'll be seeing her in a few days, so I can include a prize for her. All right, gift card. Oh, Donna likes the gift card one the best. Very good. Ileana likes the second and third ones the best. Tammy likes them all. Cheryl said the first one, too. You guys like the stars. That's awesome. Very good. All right, so let's flip back down, you guys. I have here two things we have to do, actually. One is the buy the bay cards. We're going to announce who the winners are. And then I also did a free shipping drawing. So yesterday was free shipping with Stampin' Up, which was different than the free shipping I did a couple, um, last week. So we're going to set these over here. And then we're going to do the buy the bay first. And then I have a list of there were 11 people who put in orders yesterday for free shipping day. So we'll do a drawing for that. All right, so you guys, drum roll. Brrr, la, winner, winner, chicken dinner of the You Are a Pearl, rare and precious with a little pearl on the inside. Uh, this goes to, where's our name? Hang on. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. It fell off somewhere in translation. Hang on. It's over here. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there it is. All right. This one goes to Miss Lila Erickson. Yay, Lila. It fell off when they were sitting over there. Congratulations to Lila. Da -da -da -da. You are rare. A pearl. Rare and precious goes to Miss Lynn Beasley. Yay, Lynn. Congratulations. And then this one da, 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 goes to Betty Ray Jernes. It's G J E R N E S S. So Betty Ray. I don't know if I have your address, Betty Ray. So if you'd like your card, I need your address to mail your card. And last but not least, da, 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 this one goes to Janet Play. F-L-A-A, -A. Janet, I have your number <laughs> and your address. So I know where these three need to go to, but I need to know Betty Ray. So if anybody knows Betty Ray, make sure you let her know that she won a card and I need her address. So, but congratulations to Lila and Lynn and Janet and Betty Ray uh, for these. Yay. So good. We're starting to catch up on that. All right. So for the free shipping um, for yesterday, we had 11 people and I picked out a stamp set. I think it's called Darling something. I ordered it today, so it'll be here on Monday. Um, um, if you turn that card upside down, the shell and grass looks like a jellyfish. Oh, it sure does. Um, and Lynn says, think, oh, Lynn, you're very welcome. Hildy likes the two faker shakers. Yeah, those are my favorite too, I think. Um, let's see here. So I have the stamp set ordered. So we're going to do a drawing. Um, thank you to everybody who put orders in yesterday. I truly appreciate it. A lot of people who placed orders yesterday, they picked up the Artistically Inked class already, which is awesome. It's helping me forecast how many that we need to make for that class. So we have 11. So we're going to go back here to Random Number Generator. We will put in 11 and see who wins the stamp set that I picked out that I can't remember what I picked out. Number five is Cindy Runtree. Yay, Cindy. Awesome. So you are my lucky winner of a stamp set. So I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who placed orders yesterday and recently with me, um, helping me keep my orders going so that I can get my reward so I can use it to get products, to make card kits for you guys and keep you happy, right? So, and stuff to use for designing. Awesome, awesome. So we had lots of winners, you guys. Um, Cindy and Lori and Lynn and Lila and Janet and Betty Ray. So awesome sauce. All right. So what's coming up next? Tomorrow is Friday. It's a design day tomorrow. So we have a three more classes to design, you guys. We have Ink, Paper, Scissors for July, which is featuring Season of Chic. Diane and I are going to work on that tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow morning, I'm working on the monthly cards for July. I hope to have them done tomorrow morning. And then my plan is Saturday morning to get the textured chic, not textured chic, textured floral um, sweet bundle cards. So my goal is to get, you know, by Sunday, have everything for July designed. If, yeah, it's gotta be pretty much by Sunday. <laughs> um, so just know that like that's on the, the radar. And then my goal is to do a showcase for you guys, probably on Wednesday. Monday and Tuesday are gonna be big kidding days. We are kidding up the Memories and More class, Artistically Inked and Game Night, all on Monday and Tuesday. And um, they should be shipped out by Tuesday. And then my goal is for Wednesday to do a showcase of what's coming up with all the classes for July, right? So on the radar for July for that. Um, also, 
on Sunday is if you're on a if you're on my team and if you signed up for the swap party, we have a swap party at three o'clock um, for the Be Happy Stampers. There's maybe like a dozen people that did the swapping, so you're gonna be in on the swap party with me if you can make it. If you can't make it, it's okay too. Um, but your cards should hopefully be in by Saturday. Oh, Betty Pyle, thanks for letting me know. Cindy said thank you. Um, so I've got my team swap party, and then the Be Happy Stampers have a team meeting, um, our quarterly team meeting on Sunday at 4. So that'll be a couple hours, and we have make and takes, and we have recognition galore, and I have prizes to give out, uh, especially for the in-color challenge that we had, and good stuff. So, so that's team meeting on Sunday, and swap party on Sunday, Kidding Monday, Tuesday, Showcase Wednesday, and in there I also have a retro swap share that I want to do with you guys. Um, Bonnie brought her swap cards back from the retro swap, and I have um, I want to get that showcase done. So that's going to be between Wednesday and Thursday, most likely. And then you guys, I have an entire counter full, seven forty feet worth of swap cards over here. And so I do have a new annual catalog swap card showcase that I want to do with you guys as well. So lots of stuff on the radar. Um, um, Monday night, you guys, just so you know, Monday night is mystery car night. So don't forget about that. And then Kelly will be live with you on the 29th, which is next Thursday night to do the June paper pumpkin class with you. Um, I might have I'm waiting for more pumpkins to come. So I think I had eight extra and five of them are already accounted for. I might have two, three left. So um, I gotta get, they gotta show up in the mail though, right? I just hope that they, I think they had a little delay with some of the shipping of the paper pumpkins. And so I think I have three more coming in per my records. I should have three more coming in. I think five are accounted for. Um, and so I might have some more June pumpkins. Um, the one that's on my counter back here is still an April one in case anybody's still looking for an April paper pumpkin. That's back there. I don't have any May left, and I most likely have like two or three June ones in case anybody still wants to get in on a June paper pumpkin. So reach out to me, and um, I can help you out if, you know, I'll confirm it. Like, I'm hoping that they come in the mail tomorrow yet. So, all right, so lots of stuff coming yet, you guys, and we have what? We have a week and a half left of June. The scavenger hunts are due June 30th. Um, the sign-up special um, to get the extra $30 in your starter kit um, in the U.S., you get $155 for $99. That goes through June 30th, and the DSP is still on sale. The designer paper is still on sale um, with 15% off through June 30th. And there's still something else. I think, I don't know if that's it. Hmm. 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 I think that might be it for now. I can't remember if there's anything else. <laughs> that was a lot. All right, you guys, it's time to go. We've had a really long class and you guys probably have to get on with your evening as well. So um, I think I'm gonna let everybody go and I'd like to thank you all for joining me for class tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you are watching and you decided now that you'd like to get this class with me, don't hesitate to reach out. I have plenty of them left. So um, have a great weekend as well, Randy Schultz, and everybody have a great rest of your week. Um, you guys make something pretty this weekend and have fun. Enjoy that summer weather if that's the weather you have, you guys. We've got mm, lots of warm weather coming our way, so it's awesome. We've got some great sunshine coming. All right, you guys, lots of, oh, the scavenger hunt. Yes, that is due on the 30th as well if you haven't turned it in. I've gotten quite a few of them already, so um, keep turning them in. All right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. We will see you the next time. Love you long time. I'm going to count to 10 in case it cuts out early. One, two, three, four, five, six.